You've got a tune to KEXP, listener-powered radio at 90.3 FM in Seattle and streaming at kexp.org worldwide. I'm Cheryl Waters, Dream Wives here in the KEXP studios with me. Welcome. Thank you. So great to have you here in Seattle. Yeah, our first time. Yeah. Oh, is it really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's exciting for all of us then. Um, we love you. We, of course, had you in Iceland a couple of years ago, almost two years ago now, and uh, just so excited to have you here in Seattle. You're playing at Barbosa tonight and, oh no, tomorrow night. Yeah. Getting ahead of myself. And uh, want to play a couple songs for us and then we'll chat? Let's do it. That is so awesome. Dream Wife is here in the KEXP studios playing songs from their album, Dream Wife. And it is always such a pleasure to see you play live. You want to do another song? Yeah. The next song is called Kids. <laughs> Stop the 
here in the KEXP studios with Dream Wife and that song Kids and they are playing tomorrow night at Barbosa and I just keep saying how great it is to see you play live. There's just so much exuberance and energy in your performances. They are so raw and I feel like you know, I felt that when you were playing in Iceland a couple of years ago and I saw you and were so lucky to discover a band early in their career and be fans and follow along with it. And you just seem so solid and settled into these songs. Have you been touring and playing that whole time? Yeah, I think we started the last two years ago. Yeah. And then we just released an EP, our first one. And this year, in January, we released our debut album. So these songs have now become yeah, how they should sound like and the energy within them. And from what I understand, you playing your songs live is kind of how you flesh them out as a band and how you kind of decided what your sound was going to be. Is the live show a really important component to writing music and getting it exactly the way you want it? Definitely. I think the, yeah, and the song is never really finished because it lives on through live shows. And it's always a little bit different. Maybe we add in a part or maybe take something away. It's always it's like a living organ. It's always pumping and doing something different from before. And when we were writing our album, 
we often tried maybe songs that we just written the day before in the rehearsal space and to sort of sneak them into the sets. And we had that because people didn't really know who we were. And it's a really great thing to be able to test it out on the audience and see, okay, they really responded well to that chorus. They were singing along to it, even though they've never heard it before. So maybe we should add it again over there or double it. And it's really nice being able to understand your music through also how the audience feel. And also how you feel. Do you like this part on stage? Is this, is this too long? Is it too short? <coughs> it's a great way of sort of understanding music that you're making. Um, can you talk a little bit about how the band met? I've met, I've read a few things. I know that you met in London and that you were in art school, but I've heard a few things about wishing you could play in Canada. There's a little bit of a fun little mystery or a fun story behind uh, how you started making music together. Well, uh, me and Bella, we were living together. We all studied, um, we all studied uh, different variations of art in the University of Brighton. Yeah, and you and Alice met before the... Yeah, we met in Somerset when we were 16. Oh. Uh, Mid-Somerset Battle of the Bands. <laughs> um, but yeah, me and, me and Raquel went out with our housemates. We went dancing. And yeah, I guess, I guess this band did start with a little joke about Canada. Yeah, we, yeah, we were dancing. I love that. <laughs> it starts out, we were dancing on the dance floor on a Monday night. And we have a lot of friends in Canada. And they're, they're living in different parts of Canada. And we really wanted to visit them. And we thought, how do we get to Canada? <clears throat> how, do we do this? how do we do this? What if we just form a band with the sole purpose of touring Canada? <laughs> and that's what we did. And then the next day we realized we needed more people in this band. So we recruited Alice on guitar because she was the best in town. She's pretty amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, we did this really... We got our friends to help us out and they ended up booking a lot of venues around Canada and it was more like a road trip. We slept on mega buses and greyhounds and random people's floors and... And all those friends. <laughs> and all those friends and they, yeah, it was incredible and we had the best time. We only had like four songs and I think each of them were like seven minutes long. It was just like a long jam. And we didn't have a drummer either at that time. We had like a tiny loop station that had beats on it. But yeah, that trip really um, made us enjoy each other's company and also understand that we worked well as a unit and then we decided to actually give it a go and play our first shows in England. So those so our first shows in Canada. Your first shows were in Canada? Yeah in venues we had played like a friend's birthday party and like a our first show was in the gallery of our art university That's so yeah. That's a great way to start. I mean, you can tell the love that is between the three of you when you're playing. You're clearly <coughs> such great friends, and these many years later, it definitely seems like your family. You, you gotta be. Like, this year, we've... I think we've played about, since our album came out in January, maybe 120 to 30 shows. That's a lot. And if you don't like each other, that's a lot of time spent together. So we are we're a little road family, and also Alex, our drummer, who I also met, at university. So it's a bunch of art school kids that made this into a profession. Your songs are so fun. There's a great pop sensibility, but just also that punk rock ethic in there. I hear a lot of themes in the music that resonate with me. Obviously, people hear what, what they hear, you know, which might be different than what you meant, but obviously <coughs> there's themes of empowerment in there, not feeling <coughs> like you need to give in to comply with people's expectations. But are there messages that you find floated to the top in your songs when you were finished with them or maybe going in you had some ideas? Well, I like when you're creating something. It's really great to be just in that state and allow whatever is happening in your subconscious to come forth or what you're interested in and it's not until the songs are ready or even recorded that you step back and you realize what 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 were you listening to that week or what kind of subjects were you discussing with your friends or yourself and I, it's always great to step back and realize when we listened to our album for the first time we realized there was like an ongoing theme and that was it was quite nostalgic and looking back but also understanding your youth and understanding your womanhood and understanding gender and friendship. And I think it's great to sort of, because this is all, everything that is in our lyrics, for example, is just conversations we've, we have with our friends and with each other. 
And if we're angry and if, you know, something's happening in our lives, then that goes into the album. And then you translate those to music and share them with a wider group of friends. Yeah, it's, yeah. For example, there's one song called Somebody that we're going to play a little bit later. That song was written in one go. We were <coughs> discussing um, the step walk <coughs> in Reykjavik. Mm -hmm. It was shortly before the Me Too campaign was resurrected. And um, we were just finding it so incredible how suddenly women's voices were being heard and they were, it was their voice rather than someone else's explaining their stories about sexual assault and rape culture and, and also about gender, about being sort of put into a box because you're a gender. And after having that discussion, we walked into the rehearsal room and we wrote somebody in literally one go. It came out right away and there's a lyric there that says, I am not my body, I am somebody. And it's as simple as that. It's really an amazing song. I love the lyrics, but also it makes me smile. It makes me want to dance. Um, it's really sort of the full package. And since we're talking about it, you want to play that one next? Yes. Dream Wife is live here in the KEXP <laughs> studios. That is Dream Wife live on KEXP. 
I love that you are trying to make your shows a safe and welcoming space for everybody. And what are some of the things that you've done to do that? Um, well, in the UK, we've been collaborating with um, a organization that's all volunteers called Girls Against, which um, started out a bunch of friends in college that wanted to make a change. And they basically show up to venues, talk to the venue staff, talk to the artists, talk to the security, and put up posters everywhere, um, addressing that this is a safe space and everyone is welcome here. And, you know, yeah, basically inform everyone about what are the procedures if something does happen, to have like a direct link and not to have someone clueless at the venue as well. And you also have invited women to come to the front as they often don't do so that they can sort of like dance and also get really energetic with the music. Yeah, definitely. We were talking about it when we were going to our first shows and especially rock shows. Um, we often found ourselves maybe in the back of the room with our friends because we didn't feel necessarily welcome in the front. And, you know, the next generation comes and you sort of understand that just to tell people you are welcome, everyone is included, and also that to look over the room and say, each of you are responsible for the person next to you. You're all responsible for each other's safety. And if everyone is having a good time, if everyone feels safe, then we will all have a great time and we'll all feel great and walk away happy after the show. It's great to just raise people's awareness about that because the vibe in the room can be totally positive, but just making people go, oh yeah, Everyone, let's all come together and enjoy the show and everyone having fun and feeling safe here. It's really beautiful and it changes, yeah, everyone becomes like a little kid and has a big smile on their face. But it's important to <coughs> let people know they're welcome and bring girls to the front and also the mosh bits that are created. Oh, they're so fun. So like, yeah, sometimes we've had some incredible uh, mosh bits at those shows. I bet they're fun to watch that from the stage. Yeah, and people don't get hurt. It's safe, Mosh Bits. That's awesome. We'll come out to a Dream Wife show. They play at Barboza on Saturday night. They'll be at the Doug Fur Lounge in Portland on Sunday. And can we talk you into one more song? Let's do it. Thank you for having us. Thank you.
That sounded awesome. Thank you so much. Dreamwife live on KEXP, their self-titled album out on Lucky Number Records. It's so great to see you. Thank you so much. I hope we see you again soon. Yes, please. You've got a tune to KEXP Seattle. Wow, that was so great. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.